really didn't feel like grabbing those clips again. Maybe the tier one donuts and the tier one pain and the resub spew. You talk about the Antonio Brown news? Oh, I just heard. Yeah, he's wanted by like the Tampa Police Department, right? <clears throat> I know, Aaron, that sounded like such a good idea. Thanks for your subsonic, copycat, ghostly, Lee Crow, Gurgle, and the Prime Undead. He was in a standoff with the police today. Wait, what? <clears throat> He's wanted for battery and threatening to shoot his ex. Where do you see a standoff? Oh, breaking news. Antonio Brown and the police are reportedly in a standoff. Jesus Christ. So it looks like he got physical with his ex, threatened to shoot her, and then got a warrant out for his arrest. And it doesn't really talk about this standoff. Oh, he locked himself in the residence and wasn't cooperating with police. Wild. Thanks to the resub G Money, Mini, Gibsy, and the Prime Fernando, and the Bits Texas. Now I have no idea what that is, Texas. Coward, stop banning people for saying the famous rapper's name, you dumb coward. Are you fighting spirits or something? What are you talking about? Are you talking about yay? Who's getting banned for saying yay? I I talked about him a ton yesterday. What? Are you having an episode? Like what? What? What's going on, champ? What are you talking about? You filtered yay on chat. I, I, what are you talking about? I've literally seen that like 10,000 times over the last 24 hours. It's definitely moderated. Is it? Oh, I don't know why I thought that would work. And the resub Treeborn, Chaz, Dairy, and the Prime Faust, and resub Zim. Are you too pussy to talk about the Twitter files? What is going on? What, what are you talking about? Like, psychosis is sweeping the nation. What? Am I too pussy to talk about the Twitter files? That is so indescript. What is the Twitter files? Zerisa, Biz, Nutmare, and Die Balls. I don't know about that, Texas. Definitely won't be tonight. Thanks for your sub mini and Rasputin. No, I'm not, I'm not eating the one chip again this year. It's not like a tradition or anything. Thanks for your sub Phil, Yama, and Tier 1. Kicks you. And resub No Daddy. I 
Welcome to the Bits Nice Gaming. Yeah, I'm going to do Callisto Protocol tonight, but I want to talk about all the uh, Smash World Tour stuff. Since there's been a lot of news. Thanks to Resubline and the Prime Abs. <clears throat> you see Zane's tweet? Yep. Twitter is addressing how they decided to remove or suspend political accounts and tweets. That's the Twitter files. Uh, that's not super surprising to hear. I think they still do that too, even under Elon. Yesterday during all the yay stuff, I couldn't find it through just trending. I had to go out of my way to look for all the yay clips and all the yay discussion because it wasn't anywhere in the algorithm. So I think they still do suppress shit. So that's certainly not surprising. Things are resub Xander. Couldn't tell you Jambo, probably not though. Things are resub Nero and Manji. I'll keep that in mind, Aaron. Thanks to give sub Lego. Tried to Google his account because it wouldn't pull it up in Twitter search. Well, he did get banned yesterday, so that's probably why it didn't come up. But depending on when you were trying to find him, it seemed like a lot was suppressed because I had to actually go way out of my way to find clips because it was nowhere in trending or anything which I thought was very weird thanks for resub drunken and the tin gift subs bean thank you for that man thanks for the big drop The Chris Paul shit is hilarious. Oh my god. Yeah, we got to watch that in real time last night. When playing WoW, chat kept me updated, so I went on and looked. He just posted a picture of Chris Paul's like high school yearbook and said, This guy fucked my wife. <laughs> or I caught this man in bed with Kim or some shit. Like, good lord. People are just so open with, like, the most embarrassing information like that. Like, I mean, that's kind of the kind of shit that people wouldn't give up if they were fucking tortured in Guantanamo. Like, that's that kind of shit you should keep to yourself. Like, I got cucked. Thanks to the Prime... RLG and the bits jambo. And the resub Enzo. What do you think of episode 8 of Chainsaw Man? Oh, it's fantastic. That was a really good episode. Next the resub General and Prime Alari. I said thanks for the sub, Donut. Thanks for your sub exclamation. When are you going to play more RuneScape? Uh, probably like a couple days. I, I'm just taking a little break. I finally got 99 mining. I just need one more, one more inventory worth of pay dirt, so I'll do it on stream. And then I'm on to my last skill. Slayer. Thanks for your sub, Zeckler. Nope. Uh, I haven't gone over the Smash stuff yet. I was giving it a minute. Thanks to Resub Doug. We can talk about it now. So, Smash World Tour unjustly shut down. An absolute sin and affront to God. It was a 
very awful thing that happened recently. The Smash World Tour, the biggest circuit the professional Smash Brothers scene has ever seen, a biggest prize pool, and it was supposed to happen in a couple weeks, but the night before Thanksgiving, the tournament organizers got an email from Nintendo that basically implied it needs to be shut down. Now they came out with their statement, and it also implicated an organization named Panda as being an accomplice to Nintendo, in fact, perhaps even the main big bad raid boss behind the scenes that had a history over the last year of them working with Nintendo of trying to strong arm other tournaments into joining the Panda Cup circuit, which was a competing circuit. And the CEO of Panda, his name is Alan, he made these threats to other organizations when they wouldn't join him saying, it'd be a real shame if this got shut down, if Nintendo had to get involved with your unlicensed event. You sure you don't want to join Panda? You're positive? It's safe over here. Suckle on our bosom. We'll keep you safe. And you just make these threats. So when Smash World Tour got the bad news, they blew the lid on Panda, specifically Alan's behavior. Not really Panda as a whole. It was focused on Alan. It's been two days since that bombshell. And now we finally have a statement from Nintendo and a statement from Panda. And they're both so fucking weak. They are pathetic. They're pitiful. Very wimpy stuff. So, let me pull up the Nintendo one. Okay. They basically keep saying that what they did is they didn't accept their license. They said that they didn't meet the criteria for their health and safety regulations, which is so weird. Like, the health and safety rules they were saying Smash World Tour didn't meet, so they couldn't grant a license for. And I have to wonder what that means. Like, what are the health and safety things? Like, they, they provide a venue, they provide everything a human being needs to survive, except, like, bulletproof vests, I guess, just in case things get rowdy. Like, I don't know what they expect. It's not like Panda Cup does anything special in that regard. So it, it seems like a bunch of fucking nonsense. Because of COVID or something? Well, even then, that still wouldn't work if i remember correctly when we watched the panda cup that one of the big panda cup ones is when moist esports took first second and third aaron ended up winning i'm pretty sure they didn't even require masks so it couldn't be covid related because panda cup i don't think had masks let me double check though i, I might be wrong it's been a while let's see hello Oh, no, 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 okay. It, it wasn't Panda Cup that didn't have masks. Panda Cup did have masks. So I guess maybe? But even then, that's a bit of a stretch. Does Smash World Tour have masks? Let's see. Let's go to one of their previous tournaments. What's a good one to go to? What was the most recent one? Things of Prime Skyrocket and Resub Emperor J Money Random and the Prime Catapsis. Was Apex part of the Smash World Tour? I can't I, I can't recall. <clears throat> if Apex was part of the Smash World Tour, it did not require masks. It was optional. Low Tide City was Panda and did not have a mask mandate. Let me double check. Oh, I actually went to this one in person. I, I, I wore a mask. This was uh, back in... Jesus. What was this, May? No, it looks like they're still mostly wearing masks, but you're right. It wasn't required. This was an optional mask one. Seems like most people on stream were though. Lost Tech City. Oh, not Low Tide. Oh, this is part of Panda Cup. It's even branded on Panda Cup's YouTube page. Yeah, you're right. Regardless, it doesn't seem like this would be the cause for the health and safety concerns about the masks. Wow. A perfect... in, uh, in, in great supply, Jeff. 
Yeah, it looks like masks aren't required. Like, Breezy wasn't wearing a mask here. So, I don't think it's like a mask thing. I don't think it's COVID protocol. It just seems like they looked for any excuse imaginable to slap Smash World Tour down or not give them the license. There's the Prime Shadow and the Resub Tricky and the Gift Sub Grizzly. But yeah, they, they basically, so they tried to like wipe their hands of it and say, no, we're pretty innocent here. We didn't grant them a license, but we said they could still run their tournament, which is a little misleading because they, since Smash World Tour was directly communicating with Nintendo, the statement was the days of unlicensed events is over. That time is over or something. That time is gone. I can't remember the exact quote. So by not getting the license and getting in writing, writing which I have seen, there is no wiggle room for like any excuse from Nintendo like the, oh no, it was a misunderstanding, we actually wanted them to do it. Because they didn't grant them the license, it, it, that didn't happen, and they implied that unlicensed events aren't really welcome. So it's more like, yeah, we're not granting you the license, you can still do it if you want, but uh, unlicensed events, well that time's kind of gone. So it's just a bad statement from Nintendo that doesn't actually address the problem. There's a tier 1 Profit and the Resub Spider and the Prime Rangolf. And also, this is the biggest load of dog shit I've seen all day. Nintendo cares about Super Smash Bros. fans and its community very much. We hope to continue to hear their passionate feedback. That was so baloney that my voice cracked even reading it. My vocal folds couldn't even get through that sentence without some kind of hiccup in there. Absolute nonsense. What a load of dirty barnacles. Nobody cares less about the Smash Brothers scene than Nintendo. The amount of times they'll pull their pants down just to drop their ass on it last minute to shut things down is baffling. And this is a statement coming on the back of them shutting down the biggest one right before it happened. It's crazy. But yeah. They... The statement boils down to Nintendo saying... Uh, it was a misunderstanding. We didn't grant them a license for 2022 or 2023. Which is a weird thing to say because Smash World Tour didn't ask for a license for 2023. They didn't submit an application for that. So this is truly coming out of nowhere. And then they said that they verbally let them know that they weren't requiring they cancel the finals because of the impact it would have on the players. Which is not exactly faithful to the events because they made the statement verbally that the days of unlicensed events or whatever, that time is gone. So by declining their license for 2022, the implication is, okay, so we can't do this. You're going to shut our shit down. Which is how this all happened. So it's just not a very strong statement from Nintendo. It doesn't really shed light on anything other than their incompetence and inability to work with the community or clearly convey messages and information. So bad response from Nintendo, but a much worse one from Panda. Where's the Panda statement? No, oh, I'm still in this. Here. This panda one, it would have been better if they actually just printed a blank document with the panda logo at the bottom. I stole that little uh, comment there from someone down here. I don't want to scroll too far because I saw Council of Cox earlier on Twitter and now I'm a little afraid. Someone edited this and it was just a blank page with this logo and that was a better response. This is so trash. It is so trash. They suck their own dick. They talk about like, oh, you know... We provide the, you know, resources, expertise to help with a lot of majors. We're really community focused. We want to build the best community ever and the best events. And there's no greed on our side. We just want Smash to fuck ass. Like, that's what we want. And then they very briefly, very flippantly acknowledge that their CEO went full-blown, like, winter soldier over here. In the Smash World Tour statement, there are a number of accusations leveled against Dr. Allen, the CEO of Panda. 
In reality, Dr. Allen, as Nintendo of America has corroborated, has been one of the more vocal supporters of the broader community in the Smash World Tour organizers and internal conversations. However, the Panda Cup team does acknowledge and regret an interaction between Dr. Allen and Beyond the Summit. That's referring to the now very public threat that Allen made against Beyond the Summit, saying if they don't give him broadcasting rights or join Panda, he might have to get Nintendo involved and shut them down. I'm paraphrasing a bit, but that was the overall message he delivered. It was posted by one of the tournament organizers from Beyond the Summit, and they're acknowledging it briefly, in which he spoke in a manner which did not reflect either guidance from Nintendo or our own standards. Panda took efforts to rectify the situation immediately, and in the second half of the year, dedicated team made up of multiple staff members was assembled to manage Panda Cup activities and serve as a primary point of contact for event runners, removing the possibility of future miscommunications from occurring. The fact that they label that a miscommunication and not a blatant attempt at strong-arming the grassroots organization is fucked. And that's the only acknowledgement they have of that this whole soap opera. This was not the only time Dr. Allen had done this. Other orgs came forward as well. Other TOs came forward. Uh, Golden Guardians also talked a little bit about Dr. Allen in another tweet. And they just kind of brush it off with no sympathy or any care whatsoever. And then they finish it with Panda Cup team has invested thousands of hours towards making sure this year's cup has been strong, has been as strong an offering as we can provide. And we look forward to continuing to build alongside the communities we serve a promising future for Smash. And there's no future for Panda. So most people are abandoning ship from, pa from Panda right now. IBDW, who's one of the top three players in the world for Melee, is now a free agent seems like most panda players are abandoning like this shit is sinking like this is a, a disaster i don't know how this group goes forward anymore it seems like panda's kind of dead now from the actions of their ceo and in none of this did they make any kind of clarification or talk about their involvement with these less than appropriate business actions Instead, they just default to gargling the asshole of Nintendo saying, uh, look at what Nintendo said. They, they, they're right about it. That's what happened. It's just a misunderstanding. It was about licensing and Smash World Tour just, you know, we never wanted to shut them down. We were surprised as you guys. We were fucking shocked. We couldn't believe our eyes. It's just bad. It's a terrible statement. It's an absolutely terrible statement. Even if Panda is dead, can Grassroots still operate due to Nintendo now? That we don't know. I will say, I should have left I should have left their statement up so we can go back and forth. I will say one thing from this statement that gives me some sense of optimism, though I know this is misplaced because it's Nintendo and their motto is we rub our ass with optimism. They made this statement. Even to the point, oh wait, whoops, almost highlighted the wrong one. Where was it? Where they talked about Big House. Oh no, this is about Panda. Where's the one where they... In this statement, they said that they're looking to partner with other orgs as well. Here's the health and safety comment, but where is... Have I lost my marbles? Didn't... I thought somewhere in this statement they talked about working with other groups. Did it? Did I imagine that? Did I have a wet dream about that or something? Oh, it's the first sentence here. We are open to partnering with other organizations and will continue to offer licensing fees for or licensing for major tournaments outside of the Panda Cup. Christ, it was so unbelievable. My eyes couldn't even register it when I looked back on it. Yeah. So that statement right there gives me some level of hope that they seem open to working with the community. But that's, of course, just fluff. Until they prove that, I have no reason to put any amount of faith in the statement. That could just be there for some corporate pandering. <clears throat> but who knows? Then why didn't they license Smash World Tour? Exactly. The health and safety concerns of the fans, I suppose. I, 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 don't, I don't know. It, it literally means nothing. 
And they say it's important that the partner adheres to brand and IP guidelines and conducts itself according to professional and organizational best practices. Meanwhile, they partnered with the Smash Bros. Mafia with Alan at Panda Cup. Like, it's this just, this, this is nothing. This doesn't make any sense. If they're open to partnering with other orgs, Smash World Tour was literally the most reliable and most well-respected. VGBC has the most goodwill in the entire community. Well, on par with, like, Summit. Beyond the summit. Thanks to tier one Ruben and the resub Runaway, Potato, and Snowy. And the resub Orphan, Swa, and Big Mac. If the issue was health, why would they not say, hey, this is the issue, fix it? I don't know, because I probably couldn't think of anything. <laughs> like, like, what do you mean? The health and safety of fans at a Smash Bros. tournament? Like, the worst thing that could happen there is someone passes out from extreme odor. And that's, like, it's not like Panda solved that problem or anything. Like, what do you... There's, there's nothing. They, they didn't have anything. And for what it's worth, when I went to Low Tide in person, it really didn't smell bad. In fact, I was probably the smelliest person there because I hadn't showered in the last 24 hours and was about to go on a 20-hour road trip and had already spent four hours in a car. I was probably like the Methodist that blew through. So I don't know if that stigma is still around. I don't know if that's like normal where it doesn't smell like shit. Couldn't tell you. But when I went, it really wasn't too bad. Yeah, the Smash World Tour is cancelled, and there's really nothing they could do to, like, make it happen now. It's it's way too late. This happened the night before Thanksgiving and only a couple weeks out from the championships. Like, there's no way they could put it on anymore. But that brings us to the next point. Ludwig came in here slinging a little bit of meat. So, Ludwig said, in response to the Panda and Nintendo lackluster... Or, in response to the Nintendo and lackluster statement from Panda... I just had a, a glitch there. In response to Panda and Nintendo's lackluster statements, Ludwig is hosting his own impromptu tournament, hoping to pretty much overshadow Panda. Take some wind out of their sails. So, he's doing a big prize pool and he's invited the top eight from the Smash World Tour rankings. That, of course, includes Light. Unfortunately, Cole is not top eight. I think he's number 10, so he didn't make the invitation, which is a shame. Which he would have for Smash World Tour. But it's still great that he's doing this, regardless. Look at the Biddies, Marky, and Milgo, and Trav. And the resub Coach. And the resub Hogan. If people drop out, he might be in. I just don't see why anyone would drop out. Everyone's dropping out of the Panda Cup. So I, I mentioned this the other night, like when this happened. Apparently Panda had the players sign a contract of intent to compete at the Panda Cup. But as was revealed this afternoon, those contracts, after being looked at by a lawyer, apparently only, uh, only mattered for like parcels of land or something. So a lot of other people came forward about Panda and, and like the behavior. Where was that tweet? I was even talking about low tech or lost tech city and the mask thing about health and safety. So that can't be the reason for Smash World Cup being slapped for it. Where the fuck was that tweet? Oh, here it is. Finally had a lawyer look at the NDA signed with Panda. Apparently it only applies to parcels of real estate. So it seems like they may have just copy and pasted it. And when you go into the comments here, it's so many other people that also signed the NDAs confirming that they also have it. 
that it, their NDA was written so poorly or they just boilerplated something where it only applied to fucking real estate. So they're not even bound by an NDA. I don't know if that's for players too. I'm assuming that extends to players. I really don't know. That's just me making a guess. But as far as the NDAs go that Panda's kind of notorious for now, it, it it's unenforceable because it's about parcels of real estate, oh, apparently. I don't have an NDA from Panda, so I can't actually look at it myself. Yeah, there is a lot of people in the comments also confirming that. There's a resub emblem forsaken Ray and Nelly and Hogan. What real estate? The metaverse? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea, man. I couldn't tell you. This shit's just an absolute clown show from Panda and Nintendo. <clears throat> Thanks, Arisa. Barn and JD. <clears throat> the new Smash World Tour statement directly contradicts Nintendo. Oh, I know. I, I already mentioned that. What Nintendo and Panda is stating was not the reality of what Smash World Tour was told, nor what they received in writing. So it's it's nothing from Nintendo and Panda. They, they've done a terrible job. I was expecting, I, I wasn't expecting them to somehow turn the tides here and have a like a crazy, you know, bucket of water that has the truth in it or anything. But this was even more lackluster than I could have imagined. Glad to hear that terrible, and yeah, I like kill switch engage, they're good. Xerisa Red Sox. And tier one Cameron. It is, yep, that is the, the reality of the situation. Alan got greedy. Wanting a little monopoly on Smash tournaments, or at least, at the very least, a Smash circuit. And in doing so, may have burned his entire company to the ground. Because Panda, without their players, and without players to play in their tournaments, they have nothing. Literally nothing. Wadi just left Panda as well. That's three confirmed then now, I think. Who's the other one besides IBDW? Breezy, I believe. I'm pretty sure Breezy has fully left it, though I'm not positive. I don't know if he was just memeing or not. There's always going to be someone willing to accept to play. I would agree with you in any other scene, but Smash Bros, you get, like, actual lollipop sticks for a prize. So it's not like there's a huge monetary incentive to compete. The reason you compete is because you want to be the best. Or you want to support your local scene. And if you don't like the org that's putting on the tournament, it's not like you have a big incentive to go there and play for fucking 15 bucks. Like, you're not going to bother if you don't like that company. Smash has a decent prize compared to a regular F FGC, though. Only on their big ones and only recently. Over the last year, Smash has been eating good from their tournaments. With people like Ludwig, Summit popping off. Like, they've had big prize pools, but that's not the norm. That is far from the norm. There's a resub helmet in 4th.
Smash does not compare to other fighting games. I remember seeing that one... F I remember seeing that one where first place prize was a fucking pro controller. Yeah, that one's kind of infamous now. First place for one of the Smash tournaments. I think it was Evo Japan was a, was a controller. Just a pro controller. Is it tier one Texas? Is resub sprinkles? Japan can't give out money though. Oh, is that true? I only know that because of the infamous pro controller thing and it being indicative of prize pools for Smash. But I mean, look at my prior to like 2021, 2022 Smash season. If you look at any of the prize pools, it's absolute garbage. It's like actually like 50, 60 bucks. You just lose more traveling there than competing. Like the, res uh, the tier 1 Teen Titans. Hbox got 75 for 5th at a Super Major. Oh, that was recently too, wasn't it? I saw him post that on Twitter. Unless my sense of time is way off, but I feel like that was pretty recent. Is the prime zero? How long before everyone leaves? Panda? I don't know. I'd say within a week. If they don't somehow come out with another statement to say, hey, that first one wasn't us. Uh, someone got into our computer and posted that. That's not actually our stance. Uh, that's like the only way I feel like they'll buy themselves some time. Come up with a better response. I am Jesus Christ out on Steam. No, it doesn't come out yet, I don't think. Saw so, uh, Asmin talking shit about your name and did nothing. And I did nothing. Hey, man, what? My name? My name's strong as fuck. Charles? What do you mean moist? Oh, it's the Jesus Christ demo is out. Gotcha. He hates the word moist. He just, he hasn't come around yet. It's like an acquired taste. It's like, it's like a red wine. You just gotta give it time to aerate on the, on the taste buds. Thanks to, oh, thank you to the Tim Gift Sub Skull Rider. Appreciate it, man. The resub skater and the prime Adis Gundam and resub skull rider and tier one afro. Really appreciate it, skull. Thank you for that. Thanks to the gift sub polar bear. Did I watch any of the World Cup games? Eh, only bits and pieces. Yep, I'm gonna be doing Callisto Protocol in just a little bit. It's just this story is one that I'm obviously very directly involved in. Because this is a scene that's very important to me. So I wanted to talk about it. 
So Nintendo and Panda are trying to gaslight everyone into thinking Smash World Tour wasn't forced to cancel. The word gaslights lost all meaning, but for the first time in a long time, I think you finally, or not you in particular, I think I just read it being used correctly. That is their play. They want everyone to think that they didn't force it. They want to try and like make it seem like Smash World Tour did it themselves, or it was a misunderstanding. Is the resub Polybridge and Prime Lucky and resub Bigs? Oh, the five you sub Skull Rider. God damn, thank you. You're going to watch the Fortnite chapter event at 4 Eastern tomorrow? I don't know, man. I haven't missed a Fortnite event in two years, but I don't know if I'll do this one. I really don't. I just don't give a fuck. It seems so boring this time around. I love the goofy Fortnite events, but man, I just, I don't know. Is the resub come back to earth? We'll see. I'll play it by ear. I don't want to commit to it in case I just decide not to. But I might not, so we'll see. But Fortnite needs your help. I know, man. But like, that's it's just such a burden. It's such a overwhelming responsibility to have to save Fortnite twice a year I don't know it's just I didn't ask for it, it fucking chose me he's a tier one Chester and resub mayonnaise and tanker no I've just been doing it on my own tanker I was going to hot dog, but I just didn't, uh, after the computer crashed, I lost the clips, so I just didn't feel like gathering them today. Maybe tomorrow. Oh, goddamn. Thank you for the generosity tonight, Skull Rider. Jesus, thank you for the 20 now. Thanks for the fat drop. Thanks for the reset dragon. Thanks for the reset Bodhi. Well, I talk about the Twitter files. I don't know what that is. According to chat, when I asked that earlier, it's about the election stuff being suppressed on Twitter. But like I said, that's not surprising to hear. I thought that's been like well known. And, and what I mentioned I, like after that is even yesterday with all the yay stuff, I couldn't find it without going out of my way to look for it. Or if I saw my mutuals tweeting about it, it wasn't in my trending. It wasn't anywhere I could easily access so I feel like that's still very much happening right now. That's not like super shocking to me. But again, I haven't read the Twitter files. Maybe there's more to it that's shocking. Things that resub Texas and the anonymous gift sub, the prime schmack. And the resub send me. And the gift sub formidable. And the prime shadurin. <clears throat> you see the guy who teased county police on social media and got arrested oh you're talking about the boy christopher spaulding i think his name was i did actually see that today that shit was so hype here 
God, even his picture goes so hard. Yeah, this guy's a legend. So what happened is the uh, county posted like a most wanted thing on, I think, yeah, on Facebook. Chris commented on it saying, what about me? And they responded, here, I'll just pull it up. Oh my God, you're gonna make me go to it. I'm not going to Facebook, not gonna happen. I'll just paraphrase. They responded saying, oh, it seems you're right. It looks like you have two active warrants out for your arrest. We're on our way. And then they actually went and arrested him. That's the fucking boy. Thanks to the gift sub formidable and the resub poly. And the resub NBD and brain. What a good citizen. Yeah, I know. And what a what a nice sheriff's office to actually give him warning to. It's like, oh, thanks for bringing this to our attention. You're right, and we're heading over. Like, they told him publicly before going. Like, that shit just goes so hard. Does he get the reward? Oh, you just reminded me of another story. Maybe someone can fill in the blanks because it's been a while. There was a criminal on the run and he saw that he was a wanted man with a big bounty on his head for information leading to his arrest. So he called in himself hoping to claim his own bounty and instead, of course, just got arrested. Who was that? Don't remember his name. Damn. That was a great story. It wasn't even that long ago. I don't think. It was Eric Rudolph, was it? I wouldn't recognize his name, I don't think. I imagine it's happened more than once. Possibly. Man, there, there's just so many unbelievably fucking stupid criminals out there. Anyone remember that Australian pedophile? I think, oh, I'm going off memory. I think it was a pedophile. Mr. Storrel. He was wanted for a series of crimes. I think they were, like, uh, molestation-related and he tried to taunt the authorities by sending in a picture of his face with the swirl effect on it. And all the authorities did was unswirl it and they got his face and arrested him. Yeah, it was a pedophile. Alright, thank god. Glad I didn't get it wrong. What was his name? I brought him up like three times over the last four years. Christopher Paul Neal. Oh, and it was Canadian, not Australian. <laughs> this was so good. <laughs> Here, I'll pull up the, the picture. So he tried to taunt using this swirl effect. God damn it, this is very small. Give me a good source for it. But yeah, he was a child sex offender. Here. Good old Mr. Swirl. So this is what they sent, or this is what he sent them. So all they had to do was unswirl it, and this is what they got, and then arrested him. There's the resub, Vongola. Yeah, he thought it'd be he thought it could be like a super genius, like the Zodiac killer or something, and taunt authorities, and it did not work.
Did you see someone exposing BitBoy's scam while he was on stage and him having a meltdown? I totally forgot about that. Yes, I did. Hold on, let me pull that up. That was so shameful. BitBoy, you'll remember, is the douchebag on YouTube who's the crypto bro who peddles garbage. Like, he's just a prolific, untrustworthy person in the crypto space. A YouTuber named Atozi called him out in a video uh, talking about the shit that he's done, calling him a dirtbag. BitBoy got his feelings all hurt, so he tried suing Atozi for 75 grand or something. And he ended up getting laughed off the internet, so he retracted the lawsuit. But he still makes content. And recently, at his, uh, I don't even know what this is. I guess the BitBoy Con, I don't know, convention to celebrate BitBoy's clownery. A woman went on stage, a woman went on stage and confronted him about it. And he, he doesn't hold it together very well. He's a prime Spongebob in the resub, Joe. This is so. What's happening is here. What's happening? She came up. He's like, "Man, fuck you! You're a fraud. Your shit's bad. You're stinky. Boo, boo, bit boy, boo." And he's like, "Oh, you think you think I'm a fraud? Well, where's your evidence? Pull up your evidence." She's like, "Bet." So she goes to Zach XBT, who made a huge thread not too long ago. It was back in January, that pointed out so much of BitBoy's garbage. Like, poking holes in everything BitBoy has pretty much ever done, really. It's such a thorough beatdown of his whole career. And she brings it up here. And BitBoy's not super happy. He continues to invite it, challenging her. It doesn't matter at all. His defense was, oh, it's old, that's a year old. So you were scamming a year ago then. <laughs> like, it doesn't change anything. This All of the information is still accurate, even if it's a year old. You still did this. It doesn't really change it, so it's a bad defense. BitBoy's sweating, getting a little swamp assy, and then it gets real rough. When you do this... Yikes. So his defense after she brings up the Zach XBT thread, his response is, you're a child molester, child molester, murderer, m murderer. Like, I, he just had this biblical meltdown in his mind. He could no longer even pretend to not be offended, bothered, and he had no rebuttal. So he defaulted to child molester and murderer. It's so goofy. Baseless accusations after he calls a random woman he doesn't know a child molester five times and then a murderer. Like, Jesus. Pretty big bit boy L today. But if you go to his Twitter, he's still he's still a man. You know, he's, he still thinks pretty highly of himself. He's still, you know, he's not disappointed in the man he sees in the mirror. He still talks a big game. So, like, here's him, uh... <laughs> here's him from only, what, what is this, two hours ago? Three hours ago. <sighs> Too big to care at the gym, baby. Yeah, getting, getting swole out here. Might call a woman a child molester. Thinking about it. Is the resub legend Nova in the resub or the gift sub orphan in the resub toboggan in tier one Eric's bitch boy? Yep. After the Atozi drama, everyone started calling him bitch boy crypto. Which I think is a great nickname. He did address the drama. 
kind of. In one of his shows, he took like five seconds to say, eh, there's like snot-nosed YouTuber that I was suing, but it's not worth my time. Lawsuit's done. He made it sound like he was the good guy, and he's like, eh, I just decided it's not even worth it. That was the only acknowledgement of the, the, the case that he ever did. The Prime Fatal and the Resub Trinka. Nah, yeah, Bitch Boy Crypto's a big old loser. That's not defamatory to stay. It's just me pointing out your lack of anything of value. Things are Resub Omega. Bro's pushing 50 and called BitBoy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, if he wasn't such an asshole, I would actually find all of this adorable. Like, he's very clear. Like, I've listened to him. I watched the Tozy's video, so I did a little dive on him. He's very clearly not knowledgeable on this space at all. There was a... I pulled this up on stream. I don't know if I'll be able to find it now because it's been a couple months. Someone did a breakdown of all of the things that he told people to invest in. All the crypto moonshots he told people to put their money in. And someone tallied up all of them for like seven months. And on every single one of them, they were either rug pulls or you lost 60 to 90% of your money. Only two of them had any returns. And those returns were like two to 3% returns. Two out of like 90 recommendations. Like, he's just fucking terrible at everything he does. Even if he's not blatantly scamming, he is still giving the worst advice in the space. You know, fuck it, I'm gonna try and find that thread again, because it was so good. Let me see if I can find it with BitBoy Crypto Moonshots. Oh, here it is! It's the first thing that came up. Uh, this isn't the original thread, but it looks like they still circulate this around. This, this was the information, it's just this isn't the original thread, this is someone just responding to him with it. And this doesn't even show all of it. But the person who compiled this went through all of his like recommendation crypto moonshots, and uh, these were the returns. So they went to the video, and then they went to where it is now to see what you will have made. And only two of them were green. Whole market was down, is that why? I mean, that even still, like, it's all... All of them except for, like, I guess, Ripple. Were just fucking crazy moonshots. Or just, like, blatant scams that he was peddling. This is, again, this isn't all of it. This is just one of the screenshots. But no, it, it's not just the market being down. Things are resub Saint, Celtic, and the Prime Tenacious, and the resub Preddy. We play high on life when it comes out? Yeah. You plan on playing Choo Choo Charles when it drops? Absolutely. Paradox Crypto hit the moon yet? Uh, that's a good question. I haven't checked. Let's take a peek. How is Paradox Metaverse doing? It's uh, continuing to drop. It's now four cents. That's wonderful news. That's that's great. <clears throat> I 
Thanks to the tier one Centriol. And the resub Kinney. Tommy Otalio's TikTok and YouTube. But he hasn't posted anything in a while, I don't think. Thanks to resub Mast and Konal. And the Prime Homie and Vista. Are you going to watch the Moist Apex team tonight? I don't think they play tonight. I'm pretty sure it's just Group C that plays tonight. Thanks for resub shenanigans. Have a good night, Brain. Thanks for Prime. Tri State. Are you gonna check out the Wild Raid in the future? That's the plan. I'm gonna get I'm still grinding to get raid ready. I'm almost 66. I'm not going to be playing it tonight, though. I'm doing some Callisto Protocol tonight. I want to blast through that. And I also want to see if their new patch actually helped with performance at all. Do a room tour? Oh, I will. I finally figured out what to put on my shelf down there. So there's just two more things that I will have for tomorrow. And once I put those up, I'll do like a little room tour, I guess. It looks so fucking cool now. There's the resub Mishi. You kept the Steam version? I did. Oh, that's sweet. I haven't checked that out yet, Bryn. Are you going to do the Moisties this year? Yeah. One one year. I don't know when. I want to do like an actual huge production for the Moisties. Make it like the goddamn Golden Globes. But not tell anyone about it. Just make it some crazy event out of fucking nowhere. It won't be this year, though. I'll tell you that much. What's the Moisties? It's basically just our game of the year thing. We do top five best and worst games and top five best worst bet top five best and worst movies. This was a really competitive year for top five worst games. I'll tell you that much. The worst games category this year went fucking insano style. There were so many stinkers, it was unreal. There's a reset buzz killionaire. 2022 simultaneously gave us the worst stinkers and best bangers ever. That is super true. Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok, absolute unreal bangers. And then you have fucking outrageous stinkers like Babylon's Fall and Saints Row. Is it resub John Kiri? Oh my god, it's crazy, yeah. That pendulum was swinging both ways. Nah, Biomutant wasn't this year. Biomutant was last year and it was in our moisties for top five worst games. Balan Wonderworld was this year. My god, everyone is so confused on time. No, Balan Wonderworld was last year as well. It was also in our moisties. There's a prime bard in the resum Cameron. 
you do an awards show type thing for best and worst yeah it's the moisties so it's just like the moist meter but with the five best and worst games and movies Yep, Babylon's Fall was this year. It was the beginning of this year. Makes it give some frozen nut. Things of Prime Mace. All right, I'm going to take a quick shit, and then we're going to get into some Callisto protocol. So I'll be right back. Just give me two seconds.